We will stop racing to topple foreign regimes that we know nothing about. Instead, our focus must be on defeating terrorism. U.S. President Donald Trump has ordered his first military strike, a covert operation against Al-Qaeda in Yemen. 16 women and children were killed, including eight-year-old Nora al-Awlaki. She's the daughter of Anwar al-Awlaki, a suspected Al-Qaeda leader and U.S. citizen who was killed along with his son in separate drone attacks in 2011. While fostering democracy by force was a legacy of the Bush doctrine, Trump hasn't advocated that. But it seems he will continue his predecessor's controversial policy of covert warfare. Our military strength will be questioned by no one, but neither will our dedication to peace. Some critics say the U.S. has played two sides of the same coin, arming Saudi Arabia in a war with Iran-backed Houthi rebels that has left Yemen on the brink of collapse, and at the same time fighting al-Qaeda, which has thrived in the security vacuum. Half of those killed in Yemen are said to be civilians. The parties to the conflict are closing their ears to the desperate pleas of the Yemeni people or the broad international community. The U.S. has targeted al-Qaeda in Yemen for more than a decade. But even at the beginning, there were mixed reports about who was being killed and controversy over how those decisions were being made. Under former U.S. President Barack Obama, a new president was set. U.S. citizens can be killed by their own government without due process and the U.S. drone program was rapidly expanded, along with civilian casualties. Yemen's people have suffered greatly, with four out of five needing international aid. But the only intervention expected under the new Trump administration is more covert warfare against an enduring enemy, whatever the cost. Randolph Nogle, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by Professor David Lowe from Liverpool John Moores University in the UK. He's an expert on terrorism and security. And from New York, Dr. Hamza Sharghabi. He's a journalist and a medical doctor who's worked with aid organizations in Yemen. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. David Lowe, let me start with you. This deadly raid on an Al-Qaeda compound authorized by Donald Trump, but one which killed many civilians, including an eight-year-old girl. Was it worth it? Well, it is questionable, and of course, I think a significant factor here is that the change from uh, what we saw with Obama with drone strikes, he's actually put uh, forces on the ground, albeit for a short time. But Al-Qaeda is still a, 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 a stronghold there in Yemen, the Al-Qaeda in Arabia Peninsula. It's been, I believe, the leader al-Zawahiri is there as well. So they are still a threat, but I, it's questionable whether this was the right tactic. I mean, obviously, more will come out. I'm sure the Americans will have an inquiry into this, and more will come out. And, of course, civilian casualties are the last thing any uh, state wants when they're carrying out uh, a raid like this. Hamza, what was your immediate reaction? Because there didn't seem to be too much worry within the United States under President Obama for almost eight years when civilians were killed, when he authorized strikes. So was it any different this time around? Well, uh, a lot of people, including myself, have been uh, very critical of uh, the extrajudicial killing uh, for the past 18 years or the past 10 years. And this feels like another Groundhog Day for us, so to speaking, of, uh, of, of uh, mourning unnecessary civilian deaths. Uh, the issue here is, is always uh, bad intelligence and bad acting. On, on bad intelligence that puts no one in safety and, uh, and uh, helps those uh, uh, terrorists to recruit more people, prolonging this war and uh, not stopping the roots of, of, of this conflict. Again, we've been 15 years in this, and uh, it, it's, it's just uh, uh, a, 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 another day, another failed operation. In, in, in this futile effort. Mm -hmm. Professor Lowe, the International Crisis Group said that Al-Qaeda's branch in Yemen could benefit from this deadly raid and, quote, is stronger 
than it ever has been. Do you believe them? Well, yeah, they are quite strong in that region, and they never have gone away. You still look at them globally. They're, they still have uh, strongholds in the Maghreb area, certainly from south of Algeria to Mali. But, of course, anything like this where you have civilian casualties, it's, it's, it's just uh, an absolute gift of propaganda for groups like Al-Qaeda, Daesh, any of these uh, extremist groups to show that, it, it, one, it, it may show that uh, Western states like the US have little disregard, or have little regard, sorry, for any uh, civilians in the area, and they're just uh, carrying out their policy regardless of, of what other states may think. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if there was any cooperation prior to this as regards intelligence sharing, how it was carried out. I think these are key questions have got to be answered. Hamza, how would you have them do it differently, right? Because, you know, David Lowe talks <coughs> about cooperation, and. I, I see that it was the SEALs plus Emirati forces backed by drones. So presumably you have the United States acting with the authority or the authorization of the Hadi government, even though it's not very strong and there's a civil war. You have possibly the Saudis and, and other Gulf countries involved as well. Everybody knows this is happening. Al-Qaeda is a threat not only to, to Yemen, but to the region and, of course, to the, to the homeland of the United States, and you know that it has a stronghold here. How would you have them act differently other than to, to raid this place or to drone it? Uh, first off, I would have to say that I have been myself in the crosshairs of, of uh, uh, these individuals uh, as, as these extremists, these radicals, these terrorists have, have put me in their crosshairs once. Uh, but let's make something clear here. Uh, these folks were busy in another conflict at this moment. And uh, I, it, it seems very unlikely they have uh, uh, established a credible threat to the safety of the, of the United States citizens or the uh, uh, United States homeland. So it's, it seems unlikely uh, what were the motivations to, to, to create uh, uh, such a strike that uh, uh, threatened the safety of U.S. service members. Now, uh, how would I have acted differently? I think I would have acted differently about 10 years ago, about eight years ago, about seven years ago, about five, six years ago. Uh, but to keep this conflict festering, and getting more complex and then keep saying, oh, these guys are strong and this is the only way we can react to them. These guys are getting strong. This is the same argument that was said in 2002. And uh, keep re repeating it now after all this time doesn't seem that we're learning much from what we have doing in the past 15 years. And this is an alarming and, and unfortunate uh, 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 result. Mm -hmm. David Lowe, how does the current Saudi war with the Houthis, well, the, you know, the Yemeni government backed by the Saudis and, and the Emiratis and others, their war with the Houthis and that civil war affect the fight against Al-Qaeda and vice versa? Well, it's, it's interesting to note that, uh, as you guess there, was saying 2002 and there wasn't a very stable government in Afghanistan. You look at what's happening in Iraq, uh, the, you know, the northern Iraq, there were problems there. Syria doesn't have a stable government. Libya has not had a stable government. And groups like Al-Qaeda, Daesh and other extremists use this to their advantage. And this is the problem. Uh, Yemen is, as you said, uh, the, the government there hasn't got overall control. It is struggling to try and uh, keep any control in that area. So apart from the civil war with the Houthis, you, these groups move in there, take advantage of it, create a stronghold. I'm sorry, but Al-Qaeda is still a problem. They can still inspire people to carry out attacks. Only two years ago, Charlie Hebdo, that was Al-Qaeda inspired. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't Daesh, it was Al-Qaeda inspired. Yeah, it seems as if... That, one, that was... That yeah, one, was one, of them, in, one of them that was, was a home, a, AQ. That was AP, a homegrown right. issue. Right. The, the attacks in Europe has been an, a homegrown issue. This has nothing to do with, inter, uh, with international terrorism. Those were homegrown European terrorists. And before, without acknowledging these, this, the fight against these groups will always come at the expense of civilians and uh, a lot of crocodile tears and a lot of uh, uh, faulty and false uh, 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 
uh, counterterrorism sure. measure. But Hamza, you would, you would accept, Hamza, you would accept that of one of the Kouachi brothers... Whether in Yemen or outside... Sure, uh, but you would accept one of the Kouachi brothers uh, pledged allegiance to AQAP and traveled to Yemen to train and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. their base, Al-Qaeda's base in Yemen, helped him carry out what he did in Paris. You'd accept that, right? That is true. However, the, 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 the root of this issue is always homegrown. These people have uh, domestic support. They, cannot, they couldn't have carried out these atrocities wherever they are without complex uh, uh, inland support. Just to export this problem is like, yes, those Yemenis in, in, in the middle of nowhere are the problem and we have sound and measure security and sound and measure social uh, uh, structure in place is, 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 is very mm -hmm. ignorant and very, uh, it, it, it swims in denial and it does not solve the problem. Uh, terrorists in Paris, in Belgium, the, attacks, the attackers in Charlie Hebdo, these are homegrown terrorists. Hamza, I have uh, just uh, enough time to ask you a final question. And, and label refugees and lab, label... Sure. Sure, I, I have just enough time for a final question. Sorry for interrupting you, but we are running out of time. And this is going to be a personal question for you, Hamza. How do you expect President Donald Trump's policies towards Yemen to play out? This is the first strike under his presidency, and it's, and it's been in your country. And I ask you this question, particularly in light of the fact that if you had to leave the United States now, as far as I understand, you wouldn't be allowed back in based on his current ban. With all of that in mind, how do you expect Trump's presidency well, I, to play out? Uh, this is a very bad start and it hinders the effort to, to keep Yemenis safe, to keep American citizens safe and to, uh, to help uh, counter-terrorism measures around the world. However, if I, if I was to be sent back to Yemen, uh, it's not only I'm not going to be allowed in, probably I'm going to be allowed in I'm, and I'm going to be killed there. So it's, uh, uh, this does not, these efforts are, are putting everyone in jeopardy. So, okay, Hamza uh, Shabbat. Uh, I think, I hope we're, uh, I hope these. Okay, fin finish your point. Sorry, sorry for that. Finish your sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hope the, 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 our better uh, instincts, our better judgment uh, uh, falls into place before this becomes more and more problematic. And this uh, was not a very good start for anyone involved. Okay, Hamza Shargabi and David Lowe, my apologies, uh, but time is our enemy. Sorry for that. Thanks so much for joining us.